Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can take a sprite sheet and create an animated projectile from that sprite sheet. So inside the sprite sheet, which you can access inside of your assets folder, um, we're going to need to turn it from sprite mode single into multiple. And the reason for this is that being a sheet, it has multiple frames for the animation. So I'm going to change it to multiple here. Um, now typically, in a 2D pixel game, you, you're going to have some unit standard to go by for all of your art assets, especially if you're working on a grid. So that could be something like 32 or 64 pixels. Um, now for this particular sprite sheet, which by the way, I'm grabbing off of opengameart.org um, slash content slash high dash res dot fire dash ball. Um, it's actually got 512 pixels width by 197 pixels per frame high. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 512 pixels um, because this is a high res vector sprite, obviously. Um, uh, now, once again, if you have just like a normal 32 pixel game, then you probably want that to be 32 pixels or whatever the standard is for your game. Um, now we go into the sprite editor in order to actually cut up this sprite sheet. So you can see that there's going to be six frames for this animation here. And we can slice it up by going to the top left hand menu. So where it says slice, you can do automatic, which I think in this case would work just fine. So you do automatic and uh, you can see that it makes the cuts, but in this case, it actually didn't work properly because you can see that the areas that are separate from the main fireball uh, have actually been turned into separate sprites. So for that reason, you may have to do grid by cell size instead. And you can see by the name of this file that it's 512 pixels by 179, uh, 197 pixels. So that's what I'm going to make the grid, grid size. 512 by 197, slice it, and you see now we get six uh, pixel perfect individual frames. So let's go ahead and apply that. Now, if you're working on a pixel art game rather than a vector art game, you're probably gonna also want to change the filter mode from bilinear to point and from compression normal quality to none. Uh, because when you're dealing with those low res pixel files, you don't want it to ha have any kind of filtering which is gonna blur out your image. You want it to be pixel perfect, you want it to be sharp. But in this case, this is a high res vector image, so probably can leave it alone as it is for now. So now what we can do is just take one of these sprite images, drag it to the scene, and it will create a new game object that we can, say, turn into a projectile and animate. So in this case, I'm going to rename that game object Fireball for the sake of uh, making it more clear what it is. And I'll also drag it into the assets folder as a prefab. Um, now, I guess in this case, because I already have a prefab uh, folder set up, it'll go in prefabs instead. So this is going to be where the objects you can instantiate, like enemies or projectiles go. Um, so now what we need to do in order to animate this fireball is to actually attach an animator to it. So it already has a sprite renderer, and that can render a frame of a sprite. But there's six frames that it needs to animate between. So I'm going to add a new component um, animator here. And you can see that it takes a runtime animator controller. So to create that, we can go somewhere inside of our project folder and do right click create animator controller. So this is basically the, so what an animator controller does is it allows the different animations that would be attached to a game object to transition from one to another. Now you can have one animation in this case, but you can also set up um, events, but you can also set up triggers that will happen, such as when it's not moving, switch to an idle state um, inside of the animator controller, and then you go from one animation state to another. Uh, but that's a little bit more complicated than this video needs to get into. So I'm just going to call this Fireball AC, AC standing for animator controller, and we need to make sure that that is attached in the Fireball. So Fireball game object is using fireball animator controller and now we can double click this and we need to add an actual animation in so we can't create the animation inside the animator tab we can create it in the project folder though so in the same folder I have the animator controller I'm also gonna right click create and do animation and I'm just gonna call this fireball loop 
because it's going to loop endlessly until it collides with a player or something like that. Um, so we're going to want to check loop here because the animation can loop over and over again going frames 1 to 6 and back to 1. And now with the fireball selected in the hierarchy that has the animator attached, we're just going to want to drag in this animation here. So the entry point is going to be fireball loop and it has nowhere else to go from there. So basically that means it's going to start at fireball loop and it's going to keep going until the game object no longer exists or the game is paused. Uh, so now to actually set the animation. With the fireball selected as the game object, we hit control 6 which will open up the animation window. And you can see that the animations that we've attached to the animator controller are going to show up here. So fireball loop. And now all we really need to do is to take these six frames and put them inside of the animation. So I'm just going to left click on one, hold shift, left click at the one at the end to grab six frames all at once. And I'm going to pop that in there. So you can see that there are now six frames created with that animation. Now, as it stands, uh, 60 samples, I believe, is 60 frames per second. So if I hit play here on the animation window, it goes way too fast. I'm thinking something more like six samples or six frames per second makes infinitely more sense. And we can hit play to test that out. Actually looks a lot better now. And at this point, I believe we're done. We've set up the animation. We can just go into the game view. Uh, let's disable this canvas and the other stuff here. And uh, we'll also increase the size of that fireball so that it actually shows up better on screen. Uh, so I'm increasing the scale here. And I'm going to hit play. So with play, it should actually run through that animation loop endlessly. Uh, so we now have an animated fireball. So in the next video, we're going to work on making this into an actual projectile, which will interact with game objects such as your player. Um, maybe collide to it, explode, do some damage that sort of thing. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video on setting up a animated projectile and I will see you guys in my future video content.